are you? Hey, Hi. how are you? Yeah, my pen's looking fresh and fabulous during this quarantine hey. season. You know, we had to look good yeah. for y'all, of course. Keep it fresh. We're super, super excited to have you. Thank you so very much. First okay, of all, so let me just say, DJ Tracy with the background dancers. Wow, he's doing it. We were over out. here like, okay, background. They were synchronized and everything. You better, huh? It's amazing. I, I feel real basic in the house now that I see. <laughs> <laughs> I feel real, real, real basic, real basic. Uh, <laughs> so talk to me, you two. What has it been like being quarantined right now? Oh, man. I mean, it's been kind of crazy, but actually we've been just trying to keep a schedule and working like right. normal and still trying to, you know, keep the love fresh and hot and popping and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, we've got a little bit of experience about dating and kind of weird scenarios. Yeah, for sure. Kind of trying to find ways to make it fresh and that. So it's been fun we've been staying super busy making some youtube videos TikToks, yeah. mm -hmm. you know just oh. having fun with each other so how do you are you keeping it fresh and spicy i mean that you can tell us and we want to yeah. hear all of it well girl no, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> yeah but definitely i think that it's important for us to kind of take our me time too to have that time yeah. apart so that when we do come together that it's still like exciting and fresh and mm -hmm. um right yeah would you agree baby i would you know i think one of the important things is to have some time where you turn the phone off or yeah, set it to the sure. side because mm -hmm. we i think we take for granted how much it, it really sucks up our energy and our mm -hmm. attention no, especially I'm now with everything that's going on it's like we're all so glued to our phones and it's yeah. like it's so important to just put it down sometimes and just be present with your partner or yourself even, you know what True. I'm saying? So we definitely try to practice that as well. So how do you go about doing that? Do you say, look, you go to the kitchen, you go upstairs, like how does that work? Girl, yes. Yeah. So like we will, we have our offices here. So we'll go in the office, his office or mine and he'll close, close door. his door, I'll close mine. And that's kind of like a signal, like, okay, it's me time. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, give me some space today or for an hour or so. And then, you know, we come back together. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes things a lot more fun once you come back together. Yeah, because especially in this climate, when you're just together all the time, you know, that could be a lot for anybody, even a friendship, <laughs> let alone like a romantic relationship. So we definitely try to, you know, take that time. No, I'm quarantined right now at my at my father's house in New Orleans, and one of us is gonna have to go in a minute. So okay. I, <laughs> one of us is about. Like daddy is you want me? One of us is about to get put outside. Okay? <laughs> you know, so I'm just I'm just gonna go ahead and put that out there. Yes, <laughs> Sorry, I get Dad. it. I get it. <laughs> is there anything that the two of you have learned about yourself as a couple during this time, like having really restricted movement, or about yourselves? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good question. Um. About Cam, what have I learned? Um, I would just say there that, <laughs> um, I mean, he's pretty consistent because we both kind of work from home. So right. we're kind of used to being around each other. Of course, not in this long circumstance like right. this. Mm -hmm. um, but Cam has just been super patient and that's kind of consistent with how he's been. Um, he's yeah. given me my space, so that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What have I learned about myself? That I really value my me time. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, That's what I've learned. I think that it's kind of one of those scenarios where it forces you to, you know, you have to either grow or die in a weird way. So mm -hmm. we kind of had to make things better yeah. by just evolving fast mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to accommodate for just being with each other 24 seven. Absolutely. No, you definitely had to evolve fast and the entire world is definitely, um, I don't want to use the word obsessed, but you get where I'm going with this, with y'all's relationship, yeah. right? <laughs> but yeah. before we met you on Love is Blind, take me back to 2018. What were your yeah. dating lives like before all of this? Oh girl, well, my dating life was terrible. Um, let me just throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Which a lot of people can relate, I'm sure, just watching, okay? Because it's hard out here. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not in that anymore, but you know, it is hard. Just it was as, hard. Right. As a, especially a woman who's trying to date right now, just because you have social media, you have, um, you know, the dating apps, everything. So I feel like people's attention span is so short. Mm -hmm. And even just with me, like I had so many failed romances that I was really at the point where I had almost like given up on love. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm fairy tales like that's a lie like i don't believe it it is easy to get jaded and you know you're using the app yeah you get into this rhythm where you're you see a picture you like it you hit yes on it mm -hmm. or most of them are no's and then you go out on the date 
and that person just really isn't a good match for you even though you there was kind of like a physical click Mm -hmm. uh and that was the case for me i was going on people who i like physically but then we went out on the date and it just the that wasn't there the chemistry <laughs> the compatibility in terms mm -hmm. of like who we have a long-term relationship so yeah i feel like it's so hard to make a real connection with people nowadays um yeah. so that's really one of the reasons that kind of drew me to love is blind because it was mm -hmm. based on like building real relationships with people outside of just appearances like we have to have real conversations with each right. other which right. i feel like people don't really do that now, they don't. nowadays unfortunately right. so yeah it seems like apps have been a great thing in the fact that they give you um access but at the same time that access is also like a negative you know where right. you're like, yeah. it's a weird paradox of choice type of thing where you have so many choices so mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. just kind of take them all for granted type of thing yeah for sure and you mentioned communication which is mm -hmm. like my great segue thank you for helping me through this interview <laughs> <laughs> no so, problem your first year of marriage, you come yeah. together, and of course, the, like everybody has all their eyeballs on your relationship. But you're yeah. you're together now, no cameras, and you're it's time to have certain conversations. Mm -hmm. Who brought up finances first, and what was that conversation like? Ooh, um, who did bring it up first? Well, you know, we did talk about it even during the filming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they cut that part out. Though. Yeah, there was oh. there was a lot of important <laughs> conversations. Yeah, but it's something that you have to talk about, like no matter how uncomfortable it is, because if you're marrying somebody, it's like you need to know what's going on. So yeah, yeah, I'm not sure who brought it up first. I'm not sure who brought it up first either, but but it was definitely discussed, and you know, yeah. we talked about what our plans were. Did we want to have a joint bank account? Mm -hmm. Did we want to have separate? um how do we plan on paying our bills um do you right. have any major debt all that stuff because it's important you're marrying someone it's kind of like you're linking lives so yeah. those are important things to share with your partner no matter how uncomfortable it is absolutely mm -hmm. now that we're working together every day it's even more important than ever before to talk about that because we right. we kind of work in the same industry right. same space on the same project so mm -hmm. <laughs> you know there's updated conversations that have to be had for that right. too. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you find that you organically had the same um, approach to finances, or were there some things where you had to learn to compromise? Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. Uh, I would say that. Well, I don't know. I guess we never even thought about yeah. that. Well, but these things they're always talking about. Right. Um. <laughs> I would say that we both know, understand the value of money right. and how to spend it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that we're both kind of on the same page with that. Like we don't want to have any like hasty purchases. Um, we understand right. like the order of the house, the bills. And then mm -hmm. after that, then maybe you go into the toys and all the other stuff like that. So, but we're, we're pretty frugal. Yeah. I think all, we have the same spending sad. habits overall yeah. yeah we naturally kind of have similar spending habits but you know we're kind of building a business together so mm -hmm. now is the time where we're having to figure out like should we have a, a bank a, a joint account such that we can kind of build that business together right right mm -hmm. lauren during the show cameron mentioned several times that he would take care of you okay. right so that was a threat right but at the same time when you're an independent <laughs> woman sometimes that can be a little daunting it's like right how how did that sound to you was it off-putting did it make you nervous did it make like you feel like we're giving up control or was it comforting mm. you know what to me i guess it was a bit comforting because mm -hmm. i really honestly i had never had a man so adamant that he wants to take care of me mm -hmm. so i guess for me it was just like wow this is good i i'm it made me feel a sense of um I guess comfort and security, which is great. Um, it didn't really frighten me so much, although throughout the whole process, I really stressed to Cameron how important my independence was because you know, I'm in my thirties at this point, I have my own business, I'm mm -hmm. pretty successful, I have my own place. Right. So I, I, it was really important to me that I didn't lose myself in our marriage. Mm -hmm. And I really explained that to him, like, 
constantly like that was actually one of my fears and phobias of us Mm -hmm. getting married like I love you so much and I want to move forward but I just don't want to lose myself and who I am and my identity although I understand that when you get married you kind of have to join lives but I wanted to keep who I am as a person right um so yeah and Cameron was very understanding of that and the thing I emphasized the most was you know I don't want to change you I don't want to take away from your life. I only mm-hmm. want to add to you. And I, right. I recognize from the jump that she is a very independent person, as I am as well. Mm-hmm. And we kind of march to our own beat of our own drum, as it were. So I, I recognize that in her immediately. And, you know, I wanted to be her partner, mm-hmm. wanted to take care of her, wanted to add to her life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think since we have a a very similar personality in that respect that Mm -hmm. we're both very independent people um we have that like introverted side of ourselves as well um it works it works really well for us you know given that we kind of manage it in the right way Mm -hmm. why was it cameron important for you to make sure that she understood that it that you were there for her in that capacity saying that i will take care of you and be there for you why was that so important it was important to me because I wanted her to know how serious I was about this relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because especially in this type of a scenario, there's always that concern. I think whether it's said or not implicitly that, you know, this is a reality show. People sometimes go on here for all kinds of other reasons, right. Right. but that wasn't the case for me. Um, I went on to the show originally thinking it would be a fun adventure. Mm -hmm. And then when I met Lauren, you know, I had to rethink the whole (laughs) entire scenario I was in. Same here. I was like, what do you think that where you're like, okay, I'm open. But did either of you really think I'm going to find my husband Uh, and my wife? No. No, no, no. I mean, the concept is so crazy. So it's like, I'm open to it. This sounds fun. I'm going to go and see what happens. And, you know, hopefully the worst thing that can happen is that I fall in love and marry somebody. Right. And then, like, I wasn't expecting it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so Mm -hmm. here we are. are, (laughs) You know? Yeah. And there was a moment on the show, you know, it didn't get shown, but Mm -hmm. we had that uh, a date where basically the possibility of getting engaged got brought up between us Mm -hmm. and we both kind of said that we you know expressed how serious we were about it and then after that date i think we respectively on our both sides of the wall had this moment where we're like holy shit like oh my god what this is real like are we really like i Girl, during the process, I couldn't believe, like, I am really falling in love with someone through a wall. And to me, it was so mind-blowing, just like everybody else that watches the show. It's like, this is crazy. These people are really, like, that. I was thinking the same thing. But at the same time, Mm -hmm. I was in it. I was so present, and I was vulnerable, and it was real. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to run from that or deny myself of that happiness. So thank God that I followed that. Mm -hmm. And now me and Cameron have been married you know, over a year and a half now. Right. Yeah. With so many people being invested in y'all's relationship, though, <laughs> I'm sure everyone's asking you whether you're at the grocery store, the gas station, walking around the block. When are you having kids? Oh yeah. My God. Every day. Every yeah, day. yeah, that was right. like the most asked question, right? How do you handle um, that? Right. And what's your response okay. to that? How do you handle that? And what's your response to that? Because that's a lot of pressure. I mean, it is pressure in our no, like I said mm-hmm. on the show, first for my mama, now from y'all. You know right. <laughs> um, but you know what? I mean, it's a beautiful thing. I'm happy that everyone is so excited about Cam and I having a baby when that time comes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, definitely in the future, who knows? I mean, I don't really want to put a date on it, but I am in my 30s, you know, getting mm-hmm. a little older. I hear you. So, uh, you know, maybe in the next year or so, for mm-hmm. sure, we want to start because we want to have multiples, you know, right. so. We got to get started. Do you want to name any of them Dana? Think Say about it. Again. Do you want to name any of them Dana? You can think about uh, it. Oh, maybe a middle name. Middle name. You don't have Dana, to I like that. that right now. Very, it's okay. Yes, but it's something that you can. Yes. A little something. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay. I have to ask. Compromise is really huge in relationships. Uh-huh. uh-huh really, really huge in that communication. And especially as we get a little bit older, we're a little bit more set in our ways, right? Yes. Right. So what is something that you've learned to compromise on um, in this relationship process? 
right? Ooh. Well, yes, the, Dana, what the good question. Yeah, you're asking a lot of great questions. I did, Karen. I did. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it because we tend to get a lot of similar questions, and these are these are very fresh. Yeah, awesome. uh, I think I think one of the the obvious one for me is getting a dog. Um, oh yeah, I I had been so adamant for years that I would never really even date a woman who wanted to have a dog, let alone marry. So, but when I met <laughs> Lauren, and I mean, we started talking about dogs in the pods, mm -hmm. and uh, I was I could envision it like as we were talking about it on the date, I'm like, wow, I would be willing to get a dog with this woman. That was a part of my marriage agreement. I said, if we get married, <laughs> I need a puppy. It was a very <laughs> explicit part of that <laughs> marriage agreement. Yes, and I got my puppy girl. He's bad, but we got Wait, him. The big dog, little dog. But let's, let's, let's uh, he's an Airedale, so he's yeah. a medium-sized dog. About okay. oh, 50 pounds. Yeah, he's, he's okay. kind of big, yeah, to be eight oh, months. So. I like it. Okay, so I'm still a single woman. I'm dating on the apps mm -hmm. and of course in this time of quarantine uh -huh. what would you recommend or questions that i should definitely ask while i'm on Ooh. zone right i'm trying to have a hot girl summer if we're out right. of summer yes online thing. so what should i be asking well mm. first of all go ahead and throw that application in for season two love is blind but uh <laughs> <laughs> you drink my juice ah. <laughs> no uh i think so, so I think one of the things that I think about a lot is um, asking yourself what it is you want in the next relationship, you know, are you mm -hmm. looking for mm -hmm. like that long-term husband or wife or, you know, that future partner? Are you looking for um, just a fun relationship It yeah. might be more short-term? Right. Because um, before the show, I was like, right. I, I, for whatever reason, felt motivated to do that. I think I was ready to, to know, you know, to find someone for real. So, mm -hmm. um, and then after that, it's a, it's really a question of when you know the type of relationship, you know, the type of questions. That's true. You know, mm -hmm. if it's a serious relationship, you, you, at some point you have to ask the serious questions and probably sooner than later, because if you wait till later, it gets harder and harder. That's true. You know, agreed. Oh. Anything <laughs> off limits that I definitely should not ask? Oh, see, I feel like it's nothing off limits. That's how I no. feel. Yeah, yeah like, like girl, ask girl does the most, but that's how I feel. Ask them. Yeah, I'm gonna ask all of them. No, honestly, though, I feel like communication is so important and so is comfortability. Like, you, mm -hmm. especially in a relationship, you want to be able to ask them something. And mm -hmm. if it's something that is off limits to them, then I'm sure that they'll let you know. But at the same time, yeah. they should respect you for, like, wanting to have that communication with them. So I say ask them whatever you want. I feel like... I interview yeah. people, so I'm going to ask the question. Yes. I'm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like if that's the right person, they'll be willing to at least engage. Right. <laughs> You know. mm -hmm. Are you open to playing a, a fun speed round, like a quick trivia 